This is Dr. Ron's words of wisdom, words on leadership, goal setting, productivity, and a whole lot more. I trust today this will be like a vitamin or a supplement for your mind and heart. And wherever you receive podcasts from, would you please subscribe to Dr. Ron's words of wisdom? Leave a rating and a brief written review. It will enable other excellent people just like you to be able to locate this podcast. Please help spread the word along. Today, I want to talk about how to be more focused, and if you're a leader, how to be a more focused um, leader, and for all of us, we could use a little more focus. Now, the first one is one that I give that maybe for many is quite controversial. I've said it several times, and it bears repeating again. I think if you're really interested in focusing better, one of the crucial things that you have to do is to go to bed at a reasonable hour and get up a little earlier than what you are used to. The underappreciation of sleep by so many people is almost mind-boggling. Sleep isn't a waste of time. Sleep isn't keeping you from being productive. As a matter of fact, the opposite is true. The lack of a good night's rest is keeping you, it is really hindering you from not only a good rest, good refreshing, but even to clear your mind and uh, get yourself prepared. I think you just need to start. One of the things you have to do is start turning off the television, turning off the screen time uh, an hour or so before you go to bed. Start um, getting yourself calmed down. I don't just go to bed. I get ready for bed. I have an evening routine. But I think it will help you be more focused if you get the... You'll have to determine how much sleep you require, how much you need to be able to be at your optimum. But you can't cut corners with sleep thinking it will make you more productive. As counterintuitive as it may sound, it is actually unproductive to just keep pushing yourself and not getting the kind of rest that you need. One one of those things that you just have to come to a determination is that you can fight and try real hard and give yourself a good lecture about being focused. The fact of the matter is it is no easy task. It is something you have to work at. Uh, There'll be a place that you just need to start. And the first place I'd start is First of all, is this even a problem for you? Or are you one of those uh, folks who just find it very easy to focus, to concentrate on the matter at hand? So I think before we get into how to get better at it, why don't you just assess and take note of where you are in the matter of focus? Do you Are you easily distracted? Do you allow yourself to be in an environment where there are lots of distractions and uh, that Uh, folks come in and interrupt and break your focus. I think the very first thing is just if you were to give an assessment, perhaps even on a 1 to 10 scale, 10 being I am super focused and 1 being I can barely get focused to get through the day, where would you be on that scale? And then you'll have some some handle on where are the areas that I need uh, to improve. One of the very first things is you have to eliminate your distractions. On our laptops, perhaps your pad or your desktop, you have all sorts of notification noises uh, for email, for texting, for uh, meetings, and, and all of these things. Now, if you can't push through that, if you're one of those, and we've all sort of been trained almost like the, the response that when we hear that ding or that beep, we have to immediately look at it. And if you're one of those where that is going to absolutely distract you, then what you're going to have to do is on every one of the programs, there is a place to turn off the notification. Um, It may be that you need to block your time out in specific times. Perhaps there's a workspace that keeps you in a little more of a quiet. Maybe you need headphones. Maybe you're one of those that plays music, mindfulness, or otherwise. I think another way that will help you to focus is give up on multitasking. First of all, it is a near impossibility. Instead of doing one thing well, you do a lot of things uh, halfway or or less. 
and it's hard to be focused when you're trying to read email, listen to a conversation, and write a report. You need to put them down sequentially, and whatever you determine the sequence of events are that need to be done, it does not speed you up. It is a proven fact that multitasking tasking slows you down, forces you to have to go back and uh, rework. I think another thing is you need to practice presence. What happened, being present rather, what, what happens for most of us is wherever we have been and are, we're kind of thinking of the next move. Okay, I got this committee report done. I got this project completed. All right, what's the next project? Or even while you're still working on something, uh, you begin to think, all right, uh, here's what we're going to do next. I mean, this is something that's true in all areas of our life. Even if we're on vacation with our family, we get distracted and think, well, here's what's waiting for me when I get back to the office on Monday. Or, boy, this vacation was not all it should have been. Next time we're going to go and you name the place and we're going to plan better and we're going to be better prepared. You know, there'll always be time to take care of all of the distractions and all the problematic situations that come up. But why not, wherever you are, give yourself to it. If you're at work, give yourself to it. Uh, if you're in your volunteer work, give yourself to it. If, when you're home with your family, give yourself to it. That would be another step in, in how to be more focused. It's just live in the present. So many people are focused on what they are going to do. What's the next steps? What's the next thing on my desk? What's the next item on my task or to-do list that I need to work my way through and check it off. Just just stop. And if you're having a conversation, be present in the conversation. If you're working on a project, just have uh, just have that conversation and, and learn to practice to be present. You have to take care of today. Tomorrow will take care of itself. I've also found, because I do the Pomodoro technique with a timer and give 10, 15, 20, 30, I have at times gone up to 40 minutes. But when I get that long, I take a 10-minute break. But mostly my breaks are five minutes where I may have to respond to uh, someone. I may need to return a call. There may be some other little item I do. It may be nothing more than stretching, walking around, getting a, something to drink, using the restroom. Um, you need to take short breaks. It used to be that I would try to hunker down and just put my nose down and get the work done when I found that um, that just does not work. And so they, I developed this idea by listening to others and asking folks what they did that was effective and worked for them. And I have found the Pomodoro technique the best. You work with a timer, and then when the time's up, you take a short break. It helps you to get readjusted, and then you're ready and refreshed and, and ready to go back. The other thing is that we all think we're going to be perfect at this. Okay, I'm going to learn how to focus, and here are the tools, and then now I have the tools, I understand them, and I'm going to be perfect. We get interrupted, we, we backslide in areas, we go back to the default setting of what we've been doing for so many years. Don't be hard on yourself. Keep practicing. If today's the day you start on focusing and you're practicing, be patient with yourself. Be kind with yourself. It isn't always going to work as effectively, as efficiently, or even as quickly as we think. But don't throw in a towel and don't give up. Keep practicing. I think another thing about focus, a part of my morning routine, is I have three MITs, most important tasks. And I have made this commitment with myself that I will not go to bed tonight until those three things are done. So what helps me get a jump start is a part of my morning routine. I work on that first or second one. And there have been nights that I've had to work way into the night because of unforeseen circumstances that happened that day, things that I didn't know were going to happen, other things that happen, or sometimes just through my own procrastination. Let's be honest. But whatever it is, if you make that commitment that I'm not going to bed tonight until these three most important tasks and I identify what they are the evening before, it just really makes my day better when in as a part of my morning routine, I get to working on one and there even have been days when I've gotten mostly three of them done. Now you understand I have more than three things that need attending to on any given day, but three that are crucial three that are going to help move the needle, three that are going to help me get to where I need to be. It's 
It's what needs to get done today. And if you want to take care of the weeks, the months, and the years, you have to take care of the minutes, the hours, and the days. So I'm not here, It's not, nor is it my job to tell you what the most important task for you is today. You need to make sure you know what you can do and what needs to be done. One of the things is I love to gather the information, especially when I'm in the throes of decision making and there's a problem that needs to be solved, a situation that's rather sticky and I'm trying to navigate myself and others through the situation. And I want to gather information and understand the gathering of information is crucial and it's important and not just the information that you can gather, but information that others have that you need to gather. But oftentimes, if we're not careful, the other side of that coin is information overload. There are sometimes there is that uh, paralysis of analysis. We feel like we can't make a decision right at the moment because there may be a nugget of information that currently is unavailable to us. And if we start with what we think we should do and another pertinent piece of information comes, it'll throw everything overboard and I lose focus and it can be paralyzing. So there comes a point that it's sort of an expanded Pomodoro technique and that is I set a deadline that I will have talked to everyone, I will have sought input from all of the crucial component folks who are involved, I will do my own research or ask others to come alongside and assist me. But this is not going to go on forever. There will be a deadline, a date for certain, that at that point we will process the information and we will move ahead because for far too many you're on information overload and you need to put a time limit on that. Another thing that will help you to become more focused is to quit being a people pleaser. Uh, a lot of folks uh, who work uh, in the areas that I work are people pleasers. We, we want to be liked and that's a part of the human experience. And it's, I'm not saying be a people displeaser or go out of your way to be offensive or harsh with people, but you need to do what you need to do. And at times you have to separate personalities and friendships and you have to do the right thing regardless of who it may affect if it's the right thing. Now, there are ways that we can soften the blows and there are ways that we can work certain situations. But if you go through all of your life to be a people pleaser, you will lose in your effectiveness and it'll, it'll mess with your focus because your focus ceases to be doing the right thing to what will make, make the least amount of people unhappy. And that is never our goal as a leader. Our goal is always to do the right thing. Another thing that I believe is assisting in the lack of focus that is so prevalent today is the fact that technology, we are just immersed in it. Technology, this is not a return to the flat earth world. I love technology. I, I love everything about it nearly. It, it helps us be more effective, efficient. It does. You just can't live in this world today without some knowledge and use of technology. But always remember that technology is our tool. We are not technology's tool. And too many people have become enslaved to technology. They are almost captured by it to the point that they can't live without it. Just if you don't think this is true, go go out to dinner and just notice how often people will be together and spend the majority of their time, everyone looking at their phone, hardly communicating with their significant family members or friends. I think I have told you before we were on a Caribbean cruise one time and a young couple and their child were sitting at a table next to ours and it was almost laughable. They had spent, I'm assuming, pretty good money going on this cruise. And the mom, the dad, and the child all had their, the child had some sort of a, a, a iPad that they could watch movies on. And mom and dad were scrolling feverishly when they were surrounded by a beautiful place to eat, a beautiful ship that they were on going to beautiful ports of call. We feel like it is our bloodline that technology is something that we can't ever just step back and take a break from. 
once in a while, it's great to go on a technology diet. I am not asking you to throw it away. I'm not asking you to give up on it because I'm not going to do that. It's just something that is meant to be a tool. It's not meant to be the driver of our lives. And finally, I would say if you're trying to really increase your focus time, make sure every day you incorporate some time for reflection. It won't come naturally. It won't just force its way on you. But oftentimes we're just running and gunning and doing and going other places and trying to get things wrapped up. We need to take a breather, a deep breath, step back and evaluate. Is what I'm doing really having the intent that I wanted it to? Emma, is it really doing all that I want? Are there ways we could do things better? Are there some things I need to stop doing and some other things I need to start doing? Just take time to reflect. I think that is a marvelous tool that will help you and I to become more focused. You've been listening to Dr. Ron's Words of Wisdom, words on leadership, goal setting, productivity, and a whole lot more. I hope for you today it's been like a vitamin or a supplement for your mind and heart. And wherever you receive podcasts from, would you please sign up and leave a brief rating and written review that will enable other excellent people just like you to locate this podcast. Remember, my leadership friend, you are doing better than you think you are. You really are. And until next time, this is Dr. Ron saying have a great and blessed day.